So in this video, I'm going to talk about how a sway bar works. Now, I have another video that's a, a sway bar demonstration is what I called it. And I made it a long time ago, and it's kind of a crummy video, but it, it does get generally the point across. I do have people uh, who occasionally get on and try to tell me that I'm doing it wrong or whatnot. But I think uh, when I describe it, um, I have another setup here that I'm going to show you. I'm going to walk through it a little bit. I think it'll be easier for people to kind of uh, uh, get it, you know, mentally uh, imagine what's happening as far as how a sway bar works. And then if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them as much as I can. If you have any constructive criticism, please uh, feel free to leave it there as well. Uh, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an actual sway bar. This is out of BMW E36. For those that don't, aren't aware what E36 is, that's a 90s uh, 3 Series BMW, so like a 325, 328, M3 are all 3 Series. Uh, this is an adjustable sway bar, and um, I just have it on a couple of buckets, and I'm going to walk through exactly how it works right now. So let's take a look at the sway bar setup now. All right, here's my sway bar setup here. It's extremely rudimentary. Uh, this is a fairly classical design sway bar. If you hold it up this way, you'll see that it's just a bar basically with two arms. Now there's other bends in here, and that's pretty common for sway bars because they're just trying to get around things. This is probably going underneath. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, this goes underneath like the engine and all that stuff. But, um, but basically the, the main important factor, like in stock cars and stuff, it's literally just a bar with two arms. Uh, this is an adjustable sway bar. It has the two holes um, and there's some benefit there. I'll talk a little bit later about that. Uh, but this is your classic sway bar or fairly classic sway bar. Now these rubber bushings here attach to the body. They allow the sway bar to pivot. They're usually greased. Uh, that is important because the sway bar does move uh, in relation to the body. <clears throat> These ends are attached to, we're just going to say for the sake of this demonstration, to the wheels. It's, uh, it's going to either attach to uh, like the control arm or to the bottom part of a strut. Uh, for the sake of this demonstration, it doesn't really matter where they're attached, but basically they're attached to the wheels. So we're just going to say it to the wheels. The purpose of a sway bar or an anti-roll bar is to resist the... Uh, the, the leaning of the car. The car is going to tend to roll or sway or lean in a turn. The purpose of the sway bar is to reduce that um, or resist that sway motion. There's some performance benefit to upgrading your sway bars and using different sway bars. Um, and so it's a fairly common modification. Now, how it works and stuff like that, I think a lot of people th uh, uh, believe is black magic or they don't quite understand it. So let's try to, to talk about it right now. So the, there's a couple things I want to illustrate at the moment that seem obvious, but I think it's important to uh, make it very clear. If I lift up the bar here, the bar comes up on this side too, right? So that seems pretty stupidly obvious, but there's a reason why I'm mentioning it now, and I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll say that in the future, in a sec here. So this goes up. <clears throat> the other thing I want to mention is, if I am holding it here and here, which is like how the car, the body of the car would be holding it, um, and you had a wheel attached here, but it was nothing was attached here, the sway bar would not function, okay? I can hold this, and I can move the sway bar up and down. This will not resist any swaying motion because the sway bar can move freely, right? So this is not going to help anything. Let me explain now why I, I point that out because it's kind of critical. Uh, sorry, I have to switch legs here. <clears throat> so for the purpose of this demonstration, the car is facing you, heading that direction, is going to be making a left-hand turn. Uh, when it does that, um, that means this is the right side, this is the left side of the car. When it does that, it's going to lean to the outside of the corner. So you're turning left, the outside of the corner means it's going to lean to the right. So this is the outside, this is the inside. I may uh, you know, mix up my terminology as far as I might call this the right or the outside, and this might be the left or the inside tire. Um, so if I say inside or left tire, I'm referring to this side, outside, right tire, this side. So the car is going into a turn. The, 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 the body is going to push down here 
it's going to pull up here. What's going to happen is the sway bar is going to move up this way as the body leans over. So basically the wheel comes up in relation to the body. And now that's what we're going to talk about is just in relation to each other. This is going to, the, the wheels going to, and the body are going to get closer together. It's going to compress the, uh, the spring and the strut on this side uh, of the car. Why is that important? As I just showed you earlier, when this goes up, this side goes up. If this is not connected to anything, this moves freely. It does not do anything as far as resisting the sway. This is connected to the tire. So what is this side connected to that's resisting the motion of the sway? So this is going up. This is, tr if to resist that swaying motion, if this was mounted to something that resisted that upward motion, what is it mounted to? the other wheel and tire assembly. This is trying to go up. This side is trying to compress the, you know, basically bring the wheel and the body closer together because it's mirroring what's happening on this side. So the body and the, the wheel are getting closer together here. It's pulling up on this side. It's trying to do the exact same thing. It's going to resist that motion. The spring and the strut over here is going to resist that force and it's also, and that's what is going to pro try to resist the roll of the body of the car. So imagine this car is trying to pull over, roll over to the right. This is trying to come up. It's trying to also force this side up, which is pulling up on the wheel, the entire assembly, the, 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 the weight of the hub and the tire and the wheel, and then is also compressing the spring. Uh, that is how the sway bar works. It basically tries to um, use as a lever action. When this is going up, it tries to uh, resist that by utilizing the spring and the strut on this side and, and various other things. Some people believe that what happens is when this side comes up, it pushes the inside tire down. I think I've shown that that's impossible because when this comes up, this goes up. Um, when this is not attached to anything, this does not resist anything. It does not resist the swaying motion. So that's not true. That's not how it works. It works by trying to push up against the spring and the strut on the inside tire. One other aspect you want to consider is that if you're compressing the spring on this side, you're pulling up your sway bar here, you're compressing the spring on this side, the car is actually squatting down. So this axle, whatever axle this is, this happens to be the front sway bar, but you also have sway bars in the rear. Uh, when that occurs, it actually causes the car to get a little lower. If the reason I mentioned that, if you have aerodynamics, such as an air dam or a front splitter, um, that'll cause basically the front end to go lower which may cause it to rub. So you may be wondering why you rub or whatnot, you know, or I mean, that's part of the reason is because you're actually uh, compressing both the springs when the sway bar is working its magic. So I'll talk just briefly here about tuning and sway bars and a little bit of suspension philosophy here. So um, you can go with a thicker sway bar. You can get a really thick sway bar. If you were to get a sway bar that was this thick, you basically have a front axle, a, a solid axle. Uh, so you're basically eliminating the benefit of having independent suspension. Uh, so that's a theoretical, you know, just uh, an exaggeration. So if you want an independent suspension so that these move independently, but you also want an anti-sway bar, don't they seem to um, contradict each other? Now, yes and no. So a sway bar does flex. Um, it does not go up in this demonstration equally. So this end going up, um, this end probably will not go up the same amount in distance because of, you know, it's resisted by the springs and various other things. This length, the thickness of the bar, it causes flex. So there's a torsional flex that happens here. So in real life, the sway bar, you know, this one goes up, the, the left one goes up slightly less 
than the right one. So this one will go up slightly less than this one in the turn. The other thing is when you hit a bump, because it can flex a little bit, you know, it allows the, like, if you hit a bump on your right tire, it allows the right wheel and tire to go up over the bump a little bit more than the left one. So it gives it a little bit of flexibility. Obviously, uh, that goes down as your sway bar gets thicker. The amount of flex and the difference in the, uh, in these two will uh, be reduced. There is some philosophy that some people believe that you, do, you can do the same thing or very similar things with the sway bar simply by going with stiffer spring rates, um, which is kind of true. A stiffer spring will resist the leaning or the body roll of a car um, just on its own. But there's some disadvantages there because you, it's a lot harder to tune. Um, you know, how many increments of spring rates can you carry to a track? Um, how easy is it to change out your spring rates? Um, you know, within between heats or between, you know, uh, between runs. So the sway bar allows you a little extra adjustability there. This is an adjustable sway bar. You have two holes. This is not a lot of adjustment, but, um, you know, it's a very quick adjustment. You can do it within a few minutes. You can go from a stiffer sway bar to a, uh, a slightly uh, less stiff sway bar. Other sway bars have more adjustment, maybe three holes. Um, so that is very convenient um, to be able to do that on the fly. It's also fairly easy to change out a whole sway bar than it is to pull your struts out and drop and change your springs. The other thing that's kind of interesting about sway bars in general, now this isn't uh, necessarily true for every single car, but the, um, a stiffer sway bar in the front increases your understeer. A sw stiffer sway bar in the rear increases your oversteer. That seems counterintuitive to a lot of people, but that is the truth. So if you're experiencing a lot of uh, understeer and you want to counteract that, you can either reduce the stiffness of your front sway bar or increase the stiffness of your rear sway bar. It's relative to each other. So um, you, so you can do either or. Uh, when I had my MR2 out on the track, I was worried about, uh, I put a new motor in it, a V6, and I was worried about it being like extremely snap oversteer. The car is known for snap oversteer. So I disconnected the rear sway bar. By disconnecting the rear sway bar, uh, it increased the relative stiffness of the front sway bar, giving the car more understeer. So that is something you can do when you're playing around with at the track or when you're thinking about what kind of sway bars you want to do. In general, they're going to increase your traction. Um, but like I said, it just a, changing one sway bar, uh, the front or the rear, is may not be the best option. It may be best to change both of them at the same time because then you're keeping the relative stiffness between the front and the rear um, basically the same and you should be increasing that should increase your amount of traction through the corner so i hope this video helps explain to you how a sway bar works and gives you a little bit of a background of of what sway bars do and a little bit of what the you know sway bar tuning and a little bit of uh suspension philosophy now this is a small grain of information in a very um well-developed um very complex field. Suspension, tuning, any change you make to the suspension, uh, be it the wheel uh, widths, you know, going from like uh, 225 to 245, uh, can have some really sometimes positive, generally it should be positive, but you can also really screw up the, the feel of the car. The car is theoretically tuned. If you're getting a sports car, it should already theoretically be tuned to some degree to be somewhat balanced. Um, and by just doing uh, one adjustment, just by changing a front sway bar, for instance, you can be adversely affecting the feel of the car. Sure, you may be able to reduce your track time, um, uh, lap times, but it may actually be not getting the most out of the car or it can be making it more difficult to drive. So. I would suggest, you know, um, 
planning it out ahead of time. If you're very new to cars and you're planning to get into track, tracking cars and all that stuff, uh, my suggestion would be to leave the suspension completely stock, only changing tires. So not wheels, just tires. Go with, you know, good tires and then run the car, get very comfortable with the car, very understand how it drives, and then, you know, do some research and then start making some changes to your suspension setup. Um, sway bars are not a bad way to go for uh, your first chain, you know, suspension modification. It's pretty easy to do. It's relatively inexpensive. Um, you know, if you plan on changing out both would be my suggestion. You could change out just one, the front or just the rear, depending on what car you have and all that stuff. Um, but it's hard to give really good advice uh, as far as that goes. Um, you know, it, it's very independent, you know, dependent on the car and the driver and the track and all sorts of stuff. But uh, uh, again, if you have any uh, questions or uh, constructive criticisms, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them when I can. Um, and uh, if you want to see more videos like that or if you have any other questions about suspension or car stuff, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll uh, maybe shoot a video or try to answer it directly um, depending on how big of a question it is. Uh, if you want to see other types of videos like this, please subscribe. And please let me know what you're looking for, like what you have questions about. Um, what may be obvious to me is not obvious to everybody else and uh, it might be worth uh, shooting a video. All right, thank you.